everyone. Uh, welcome to our first lesson on uh, refrigeration. This is for power machines N6. And uh, to start off, uh, we'll be looking at the four basic components of your refrigerator. So we have an evaporator, uh, we have a compressor, we have a condenser, and we've got a throttling valve. So my refrigerant works as follows. Uh, my refrigerating gas is traveling into my compressor at low pressure from my evaporator. It is then compressed and the pressure is raised to a higher pressure. Then that refrigerating gas is then sent to the condenser where it is extracting heat. So we've got heat loss at constant pressure. Then we're sending this refrigerating gas into the throttling valve where the pressure is decreased. So here we're experiencing a pressure drop as well as a change in temperature. Once my temperature has been dropped, as well as the pressure, it is then sent back to my evaporator where a heat is gained through my, evapor through my evaporator. So, what are we actually calculating here for this refrigerating gas? Well, we'll be analyzing the pressure versus entropy diagram for any refrigerating cycle. So to analyze the pressure versus enthalpy for my refrigerant, I need to consider the following. I need to consider the lowest pressure of my refrigerating cycle, which would be the evaporator pressure. This is the lowest pressure, P1. And evaluate the highest pressure of my refrigerator, which is P2. So here we've got low pressure line and high pressure line. Then, I need to consider three important points. One of those points is the entrance. Two, compressor. I need to know how is this, I need to know how is this refrigerant entering my compressor. Uh, secondly, I need to analyze how it is leaving, leaving, leaving your compressor. And lastly, I need to analyze how it is entering or should we say, we need to analyze the entrance. Entrance to the throttling valve. Throttling valve. Okay, so starting with the first one. Uh, entrance to the Compressor, so this is going in there. So if it's going in there, it means it was exiting my evaporator. So there are three ways in which my refrigerant can enter my compressor. Uh, it can either enter your compressor wet, it can either enter your compressor dry, saturated, or can either be uh, 
sous pas une tête. Sous pas une tête. So those are the three types of uh, refrigerant uh, that, that that your refrigerant can enter your compressor. So let's assume that it is entering my refrigerant wet. So it would be entering my uh, sorry. It would let's assume it's entering your compressor wet. It simply means that it's entering at a low pressure, and it's wet. This would be your wet region inside there everything enclosed under this curve is your wet region everything beyond this curve would be the superheated region and everything on this line that is this line over there up until the critical point there everything on that line is dry saturated dry saturated and then on this side of the curve everything that lies on this curve line this would be a liquid liquid saturated and on this side of the curve this is this area here that area there we say is the subcooled region subcooled region okay so Let's draw this diagram on a pressure versus entropy. Uh, sorry, pressure versus entropy diagram. We'll come to entropy. So, this is your low pressure line, your evaporator line. This is your high pressure line, your condenser line. So, my first assumption is that this refrigerant is entering wet at low pressure so my point would be there point one would be inside the wet region uh, second assumption is that it is leaving my compressor so this is coming out here it's leaving your compressor uh, superheated so at the highest pressure my point two would be there so I can join that line over there. Then at exit from my compressor, so sorry, at exit from your condenser, which is over there. So if it's exiting your condenser, it's going into your throttling valve. I'm assuming that it is liquid saturated. So this is my liquid saturated curve at high pressure my point would be there, so I can draw a line up there. Then, through my throttling valve, I'm gonna experience a decrease in pressure at constant enthalpy. So this is going straight down there, and heat is gained by my evaporator. It would be moving in that direction there. So this would be my refrigerating cycle. So let's just name the points. This would be point one, point two. That point there would be point three, point four. And here I would have point five. So how do I calculate the enthalpies at each of these points? Because I need the enthalpies to find out how this compressor is going to perform and so forth. So to find H1, let's use a different marker. To find H1, H1 is equals to, it's in the weight region, so it would be HF at the lower pressure line plus X HFG at the lower pressure line. X would be your dryness fraction. Uh, H2, 
H2 is in the superheated region, therefore it would be Hg plus the specific heat capacity of superheated steam, sorry, superheated refrigerant uh, into T soup minus T S. So this would be the superheated temperature, T S would be the saturation temperature at this high pressure line. All right. H3. H3 is on my dry saturated line. This is my dry saturated line. So H3 would be simply Hg at the high pressure line. At the high pressure line. All right, then we come to H4. H4 would be hf again at the high pressure line because it's on my liquid saturated line my point four then my enthalpy at five h5 should we put it there would be equals to h4 since the enthalpy change the, there's, there's no enthalpy change for between 0.4 and 0.5. Okay, so let's now check how this refrigerant is working. So to calculate the work done by the compressor, your compressor, work done by your compressor is over there. This would be your work done. Work done is simply H2 minus H1. The effect of your refrigerant, refrigerating effect, is measured at your evaporator. My refrigerating effect, Re, would be h1 minus h5 then uh, lastly to finish off part one of this video uh, we have a coefficient the actual should we put actual coefficient of performance which would be your refrigerating effect divided by the work done Okay, so that's the end of the first part. See you on part two.